bill that was passed by Congress, the city of Gary uh, received $80 million uh, for under that program. Uh, the dollars can be allocated and used for a variety of reasons, a variety of purposes, I should say. Uh, we've already spent dollars uh, related to premium pay uh, when the COVID uh, pandemic was actually active. And we were able to pay dollars for, uh, or pay workers, I should say, uh, to work during the pandemic. Uh, we've uh, also allocated dollars to the public safety uh, payroll. Uh, they too were on the front lines at that time. But we've also allocated dollars related to other uh, activities. Uh, we already have a small business grant program where we, ex we are accepting grants right now. And now we're looking at allocating dollars or and, and, and ensuring that not for profit can actually receive dollars as well. All of these entities were negatively impacted during the uh, pandemic, and we're trying to assist not-for-profit small businesses and other uh, entities to actually kind of bridge that time period from when you actually were severely impacted till you could get back on your feet. So the Legacy Foundation, as Kelly mentioned, is partnering with the city of Gary to administer these dollars. They've been uh, charged with management of the dollars in the grant application process. Um, so we have, uh, under the ARPA Act, there are certain uh, categories of funding uh, that we can provide to entities. And for not-for-profits, they fall into really three categories. One is programmatic or service delivery. Um, usually the programmatic either relates to the prevention or uh, uh, I'll say reduction of the spread of COVID. Uh, sometimes uh, those kind of projects relate to, say, uh, uh, constructing some sort of outdoor uh, patio, for example, at a restaurant, where you're limiting contact between clients. Um, they also, you can also do those same kinds of improvements uh, at your actual location, your uh, business office or whatever. Um, we also are looking at operations under the pandemic, a number of not for profits were severely impacted by a reduction in donations and contributions. So there are operational dollars that are available uh, as a result of this program that you can apply for. Um, we call it mitigation of financial hardships. We also can provide dollars for technical assistance. Some uh, not for profits and small businesses are taking advantage of this of these dollars to do some business planning, to do some um, uh, outreach uh, or uh, pr obtaining assistance that they would not be able to get, who might not have the dollars for under normal circumstances, but with these dollars, they can actually contract uh, with a consultant to begin to look at maybe your structure or how to improve your operations. Um, there, are, uh, on, there are a number of examples that we have given you in the uh, uh, PowerPoint that kind of illustrate the kinds of things that not for profits can do uh, with these dollars. Um, of course, internet access was a really big uh, item, especially during the pandemic, when we were looking at schools and their access to uh, the internet, also any kind of out, um, after school programs, that kind of thing, they were looking at how well uh, uh, the, the children were actually able to connect to the internet uh, and be able to be assisted, say for school work. Food banks, that's another uh, item that we had looked at and what that you can actually receive funding for. As I mentioned, outdoor spaces and then operational support. Um, who's eligible? 501c3. And 501c19. 501c19s are veteran organizations such as AMVETS, uh, that kind of thing. Unfortunately, some of the other not for profits are not eligible under this, these funds. They, they have specifically excluded a number of not for profit categories that are not mentioned here. You must be in good standing with the IRS in order to apply. The projects that you are uh, thinking of doing must serve residents of the city of Gary. 
only one application per organization and priority will be given to not-for-profits that are actually located in the city of Gary. All not-for-profits that serve residents in the city of Gary can apply, but priority is given to not-for-profits that are actually located. Um, the one other proviso is that organizations that have already received ARPA dollars uh, through an appropriation from the city council are not eligible. There have been some other organizations that were directly funded by the council in the past uh, year or so. Uh, those organizations cannot apply again. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn it back over to Kelly. Um, and I'm sure there'll be questions. I, I can certainly try to answer them at some point if they call to me. And I'm gonna pass it back to Edward. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, really, thank you so much for that information. Uh, I want to start. Well, my name is Edward Baker, and it's my distinct honor to serve as community impact director for the Legacy Foundation. So, between Kelly and I, Kelly D, which is the table, uh, we will be working on you know, receiving your proposals and reviewing them. And so, during this presentation, you're going to learn more about the process. Both and your disposition any time you need assistance with your proposal. We will not write your proposal for you, but we will answer any questions you have. Give you the best consultation we can. Okay? That being said, let me tell you a little bit about the Legacy Foundation. Our mission statement is to transform Lake County by providing strategic leadership and impactful philanthropic support to ensure equitable opportunity for all communities we serve. Our vision statement is to create an equitable Lake County where all people thrive. The impact the Legacy Foundation has had in the past year includes awarding over $3 million in grants to nonprofits in Lake County. It also includes awarding $1.3 million in scholarships to Northwest Indiana students to attend college. It also provides mentoring, training, and technical assistance to Lake County serving non -tutors. We promote civic engagement and education to residents to empower them to be strong advocates for our community. We've collaborated with local leaders to enhance residents' quality of life. That said, back to ARPA. So the awards you're going to be applying for can range from $2,000 to up to $50,000. $2,000 to $50,000. Grant funds need to be utilized within a 12-month period. When does that 12-month period begin? It begins the day you receive your award notification, which we expect to be on or about July 25th. Okay? So it has to be a 12 month program that begins on the day, and that 12 months begins on the day you receive your notification. Applications will only be accepted through Legacy Foundation's online portal. And the address is right there on this page we're looking right now at in our PowerPoint presentation. And it's the same portal you have used in the past if you applied at Legacy for funding. This morning I got a phone call asking me if they need to create a new account. No, you can use the same credentials if you've applied for Legacy funding through this portal. You can use the, cred the credentials you have already entered. So no need to create a new account. The application period began on May 5th, so the application is already open on our portal. And the due date is June 18th at 5 p.m. And that's Central Daylight Saving Time. Once again, all applications are due by June 18th, 2023, 5 p.m. 
because this is a competitive grant, we will not, I emphasize, we will not accept any applications after June 18th at 5 p.m. Award not notifications will go out, as I already said, on or about July 23rd. So, important tips while you work on your proposal. And these are all items that will go into the evaluation of your proposal. Please be sure to tie your goals directly to your need statement. Okay? If your need statement is to decrease the propagation of COVID, then your goals need to be tied to the decrease of the propagation of COVID. I hope that makes sense. Please be sure that your goals match your statement of need. Include all relevant groups and individuals in your target population. If you are going to serve the community of Glen Park or Miller Park or any other community in Gary, please specify that in your application. If you want to focus on a certain geographical area, please let us know. So please be detailed about that. Always allow plenty of time to accomplish your goals. Give yourself some cushion. Please, please, please. Don't feel like you have to complete all your goals within the first six months of your project. Be realistic about your time frame. Figure out how you will measure the change of objectives in each goal. So please, be sure that your goals are measured. You need to be able to substantiate your goals and the attainment thereof. In one word, remember the word smart. Your goals should be specific, measurable, I can't say that enough, realistically attainable, and environment. Your application must be able to demonstrate the following. That your organization has the capacity to carry out the projects you prescribe in your proposal, or has experienced significant financial strain due to COVID 19. Please be sure that your project is clearly defined, as well as how you are going to utilize the funds that you receive in this initiative. Please be sure that your budget your expenditures are clear. And that the costs are reasonable. If the project you're implementing only needs a $500 laptop, why ask for $1,500? Unrealistic. That's something that's going to be looked at when we evaluate your proposal. I hope it makes sense. Make sure your outcomes, once again, are clear and measurable. Please be sure to explain how this project will sustain itself after the 12 month period. This funding is not renewable. So we want to make sure that after 12 months, you have a plan to keep this project going. If that's your plan. Okay. If you have collaborators, please substantiate your collaborators by a letter of agreement, come around and help with you, letter of support. It's very important that you provide substantiation or documentation. So, the next are 10 very frequent grant writing mistakes. I really like this page in the presentation because I've seen this time and time again. Not following the instructions. Please be sure to read the instructions. Pay attention to exactly what you're being asked to report. And everything should go well. Please be sure to answer the question that's being asked. And once again, be sure you read that question very, very well and understand what you're being asked for. If you don't, give Kelly or I a call. We'll be more than happy to help you. Make sure the purpose of your grant is clear. Grammar and typos. I am horrible at proofreading. I'm very guilty of that same. Always use a proofreader or two or three. 
is you want to make sure that you are minimal. Is Careful with the use of jargon and cash phrases. When you write your proposal, make believe you're writing it to a language. Someone who's really not familiar with all the expertise that you are familiar with in your particular area. Okay? I may not know much about special needs, and I do need to tell about it. So please, when you're writing your proposal, keep in mind that you are speaking to an average person. Please be sure that your budget is clear. Let us know what you are using the money for. Do not overestimate. Be realistic about what the amount of money that you need is per hand. Once again, if you have collaborations, make sure that these collaborations are established and that you can substantiate them. Make sure that you explain that you do have the capacity to carry out the activities you have described. And if the project or the funding you're requesting from the foundation, the legacy foundation, does not include the entire budget of your project, please be sure to let us know. If you're only, if you're only funding a portion of the project's budget, let us know who's funding the rest. Okay. Please let us know who you've already uh, asked for uh, the funding from, and let us know who is actually already committed to the Does that make sense? One. So the review process. The review process is as follows. But once again, I'm going to repeat. Applications are due June 18, 5 p.m. We will not accept any applications after that date and time. Staff review will staff will review the applications to verify the application. Make sure you're eligible. Make sure you provide us all the information that we need. After that, the city and Perry appointment committee will review and vote on all funding decisions. Once again, awards can vary from $2,000 to $50,000. Funding decisions are communicated to all applicants on or about July 25th, 2023. So I leave you with our next administration. Sure. Board okay, okay. so if you go to our website, legacyfdn.org, that's the easiest way to get logged in. And you'll want to go to our grants portal. Make sure you stay away from scholarship. That's a different program, and it's not going to get you where you need to go. So into the scholar, to, into the the grant side. If you've already created an app, uh, application with us before and received funding, you can just log directly in. If you've forgotten your password, there's a link here to to get that reset. And if it's not working for you, you can always just let me know, and I can reset it for you. If you've never been into the system before, you'll want to create an account. And this information is not asked for anywhere else in the application. So you'll want to make sure that you do fill out everything that it asks for because it becomes part of your application packet. And then I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me fill out a new profile, um, but enter in the information, click next, and then it will ask if you're the ED. If you are, yes. If not, enter that person's information and then create a password for yourself. So we're going to go back and log into one of my pretend accounts so that you can see what it looks like. And hopefully I'm typing correctly. Good job. Okay. So once you're logged in, there will be a list of all of the applications that we have open at the moment. So there might be some other things that you're interested in other than, than just ARPA. Um, but when you do come in, you'll want to look for the apply button at the top of the page. It's small and hides, but it's up at the top. And then scroll down to ARPA is the, the last application here in the list. And the first thing we need to do is make sure that we meet the eligibility requirements. So we're going to carefully fill these out so that I don't log myself out here. If you do click something incorrectly, let me know. I'll take a look. And if it was just clearly a, a miss 
click, then I can open that back up for you or we can discuss what the issue was. Oops, making sure that I'm answering correctly. I don't wanna do anything wrong. No, we have not. And I'm a 501c3. Okay, good. And then it doesn't believe you, so you have to tell the system again, yes, you really do want to apply for the application you're working on here. And so now we're on our main homepage. You can see the information that we entered as part of creating the account is at the top here. If you see an, an error that needs correcting, you can fix the applicant information, but it will require that you reach out to me to fix the organization information. If you would like someone to help you out with the application, they know way more about the budgets or the finances than you do. There's a collaborate button here at the top. You can click on that, enter in their email address, put a nice little message, please help me out. And then you can choose, do you want them just to be able to look at it? Can they make edits? Can they do everything and even submit it for you? And then once you email that to them, it will send an email to them that will give them a link directly into our page where they can create an account if they don't have one or log in themselves. But that way you can get some, some guidance in, in the application. If you are looking for a list of all of the questions in the application, you can do that here from this question list. The downside is it's gonna give you a list of all of the questions. So if you have chosen, and we'll look in just a second, if you've chosen that you wanna do the technical assistance, grant, it's not going to break it down for you. It's going to list everything. So you, you may get more information there than, than you were hoping for. Um, you do need to title your program. Think about what you want that to be. Um, in publicity, we do use that grant name quite often. So make sure it's not something that's going to embarrass you if we publicly use that name. Um, how much money you're requesting. Please make sure that you remember how much money you're requesting. We get a lot of applications where we see one amount here and we see another amount in the budget. And then in the narrative somewhere, we see a third amount. And so it's kind of a toss up. How much does the committee feel like we should give you of those three numbers? We usually go with the lowest amount. We do. <laughs> we go the lowest. So here are those three focus areas that we were talking about, programmatic operations and technical assistance. And depending on which bubble you choose, the application will change slightly. So if we, if we click programmatic, we can see that it adjusts our, our questions, operation adjusts again. So we'll just look at, we'll look at each one quickly um, just to highlight kind of the main, the main differences. So at the top of the programmatic, we're just looking for some background on what you're trying to do, what the impact is gonna be of your, of your project, the location, if it's going to be at your organization, great. If you're gonna host it somewhere else at a school or, or another facility, we wanna see the MOU or letter of understanding that you have that arrangement already worked out and know that from day one, if we award this money, you're gonna be ready to go and, and have use of that space. The chart here for ethnicity, those are all required fields. So if there's a particular ethnicity that doesn't pertain to you, just make sure you put a zero in that box. Otherwise, if you try and submit the application, it's gonna tell you that you're not finished. For the outcomes, we're looking for you to, to list at least two outcomes in the chart. Hopefully you have more than that, but at least two are required. And if you really are a star here and have more than five you wanna tell us about, we give you some room to do that as well. So in this, in this expenditure bucket for, for the budget here, this is not an org budget. This is a breakdown of what you've requested. So if you have requested 30,000 from us, then this is kind of getting into the weeds of how you're gonna spend that 30. So not just a bucket of arts and crafts, but these are the specific items that we're looking for and how much they cost. But just remember, we're not looking for a breakdown of your whole org budget here. There's a place to, to do that later. Um, the, this budget template that's here, I don't know if it's going to share my screen, not e probably not. Let's see. Oh, good. So when this loads, um, there's information uh, places at the top here for you to enter in if you have other funding that's committed or pending or in kind. And then the big buckets of where the money is going to go. Feel free in this section if you have no food in your 
in your program, you can delete that line out or you can replace it with something that's missing that pertains to, to your budget and project. And then if you have notes for us, that's down here. But the use of this a template is required. We wanna make sure that we're comparing all applications apples to apples. And then you'll upload that once you have it completed and saved. Um, remember as you're uploading things like here with the documentation, if your document has more than one page, you're gonna to need to upload it as a single PDF. If you try and upload more than one thing, it's just gonna replace over what you've already uploaded. And then just finishing up with some information about your organization, what you've done in the past. Uh, prior grant awards, we're looking at both from Legacy Foundation and ARPA money. And then down, going super quick here, all the way at the bottom, the system doesn't ask you to review your application before you submit. Since we won't open it back up for you once it's submit, we just ask you to acknowledge some city legalese things and then agree that yes, you've reviewed your application and you're happy with it. So now we go back to the top. We decide we don't like we don't like programmatic. That doesn't fit us. We lost too much money. We want to do operations. Did it change for me? Okay. Um, so then just highlighting the main differences, uh, telling us about how the money that you lost from COVID, what that was like for your organization. And then the main difference is the uploading of your financial statements. So we're looking from 2019 through 22. So we're looking for your annual income, your expenses, and then uploading your 990 or your board approved audited financial statements. And that's the, that's the main difference. This is a shorter application since you're not talking about what you're doing programmatically. The technical assistance application looks a lot more like the programmatic. Difference at the top is just explaining a little bit about what the technical assistance that you need is, whether, you know, software, consultants, whatever that might be, telling us a little bit about that. And then from there, it's going to look pretty much the same as, as what you have, what you were filling out before. The application does save in real time. It will take count your words. It works very much like Microsoft Word. Um, you're, you're welcome to type in Word and then paste over into this system if you would prefer. We've had some glitches where sometimes it hasn't saved properly. That way it might save you some time um, at the end if you're, if you have any issues. Once uh, there is a save button at the bottom here if you just wanna cover all your bases before you log out and push save. And then when you submit, if you've left anything out, it will make sure and warn you of that. Any questions on that super, super fast? <laughs> I saw yours first. Like sure. So, um, one is that it does seem to have some questions about what we're going to do with the mm -hmm. um, So, can you just give a little bit of a more there if you're not looking for us to do it? Yes, I'll show you. How you're going to spend it? What what you're doing to make up for the losses that that you've encountered? Um, do you want to add anything, Arlene, specifically that you might be looking for? Most of the organizations that MHA has, they might still owe, uh, and then trying to find them. Some people have had reduced. Income and they might need something that's payroll, you know, that kind of thing. So just trying to, uh, all of this is very common, both in this case and in the market. Um, my second question is automatic. No. No, all, all equal. So the question was is one category. Does one category have higher priority than the other two? The answer is no. Mm -hmm. Vernon? It's not, it's not really asking you those questions when you go through the application. 
that's more for the for the technical and and programmatic. So I, I if you have questions on how to answer something once you get in, feel free to reach out. But I I don't think you'll find that you need to. It would allow you, but I would say if you come across that, it would be best to reach out to us. We tried really hard to make sure that the questions for each of those priorities fit. So we're we're hoping that you shouldn't find anything where where the answer would be, I don't know how to answer this. Yes. Yes. So, but it's not, um, I mean, so we are, I mean, for dollars that you're looking to recover that are lost due to COVID, then it does have to be dollars that were lost due to COVID. But, you know, for the, like, how are you going to spend them? That's not, I mean, we just kind of, it can be even more to make up for operational shortfalls or to make up for, um, you know, if you had to take out a loan or you had to pay out a reserve that you had. So, you know, I mean, you can be transparent about that. It's not, we're not looking to see if it's programmatic or that you have to put it toward a certain area. If it's lost money, it's lost money, right? So we want to make sure that the organizations recover from that in whatever way they need to. Donations that were given to you afterwards. We had not that. Um, they weren't revenues you know, coming in. We did a bit of things. I did the seats. We did the seats. It's not operation. It's not. So we look at the organization's budget, you know, so we look at your total, the revenue and the expenses for and really the years that we saw most losses were in 2020 and 2021. And so, you know, if you, so that's why we asked for your 19 numbers too, because look at if you were here in 19 and then in 2020 and 2021, you were down here and then those are both, you know, we would do the math and say, okay, you lost $50,000. Mm -hmm. I just want to clarify, Kelly, you had said something about um, that doing a Word document and a transfer over. Is there a Word document we can download and write this thing and then do a copy paste back? I would love you if you have it. Oh, if you okay. don't, it's fine. Because <laughs> usually I just print it out, but I was just curious. I could probably figure that out. Let me let me look at that and then hopefully we can get that figured out and Miranda could include it when she sends the slides out. Just for you. <laughs> one one grant per organization, right? So you can't like repeat the first program. Right. Thank you. It has to be done through the online portal. No, you can you can upload a word. It, yes, I don't have anything set to a specific. I mean, obviously the Excel budget needs to be uploaded as an Excel file, but but the other things, no, they can be whatever format you have. So the question is, may I upload or can I upload PDF support information? So with partnerships, can you only, let's just say, yeah, I was partnering with two different organizations um, to fulfill some of their programs. Is that doable or? 
if you want to know if you want to collaborate with two of them, it's fine. Mm -hmm. You may have one organization that special, specializes in this, right? Or only one. If we have uh, maybe three or four anyway, we have to put them together into one PDF. Yes. Upload it as one. Yes. It will, it will replace. Yes. So it needs to be one one document that you upload, no matter what format it's in. Any other questions? If not, I want to thank everyone for their attendance. Ms. Arlene, thank you. Ms. Kelly, Ms. Kelly, thank you all. This is being recorded. It will be on the Legacy website as of tomorrow morning. And it does include the PowerPoint. Once again, while you're working on your proposal, if you have any questions, want to do a consultation, Kelly, Bear, and I are in your disposition. All right? Any other questions? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, and we wish you the best.